I want to ask you about something that everybody is excited and worried about. Your collaboration with GlaxoSmithKline and the UK government on testing for the virus has a goal to deliver some 30,000 tests a day in May 2020. How is that going? Uh, good morning, Francis. Uh, Francis, I'm so very happy to be with you today. It's going actually very, very well. Um, our team and uh, the Glaxo team, together with the University of Cambridge, have done an absolutely incredible job. We now have 150 people working on site in Cambridge in the McLaren building. Um, we've been able over the last uh, couple of weeks to you know, bring all uh, very modern equipment. We were lucky because we had lots of PCR equipment that was waiting to go into our new R&D sites at the Cambridge Biosciences campus, and we redirected this equipment to this uh, testing site. Um, we are going to start testing mm -hmm. this week. Uh, we are very much on track, and uh, we believe we will be delivering the 30,000 tests a day very, very quickly. We are actually sourcing, maybe Do if we I can add, sourcing the kit. Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, uh, please finish. I was going to ask you if we trust the test. What are the unexpected challenges in this? Yeah, no, actually, we do trust the test. Um, we, I was going to say we are sourcing the kit from uh, a, a British uh, company, a UK-based company, um, and uh, called Primer Design. And so we have, you know, we are very much working with them. The test is validated, of course. We've just gone through accreditation by the NHS uh, as a new lab. You have to be accredited. And so everything is very much on track. And uh, mm -hmm. this viral testing will actually work, work uh, very well, we believe. We have equipment that is very modern with a very high <coughs> throughput. So um, we think we can really uh, deliver those tests very efficiently with this new equipment and the people we have on site. Um, Monsieur Sorio, how is this, you know, the pandemic, how much time is AstraZeneca trying to figure out COVID-19 and the pandemic? And how is it affecting the development, the marketing, the use of new drugs, other drugs? Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, you have to kind of keep in mind that uh, the, the people who are the most exposed uh, to this COVID infection in terms of the consequences or the complications are the people who have, pre, uh, who have underlying conditions. So anybody who's got asthma, chronic bronchitis, hypertension, diabetes, um, or any of those kind of chronic diseases, uh, like cancer, of course, is, is, is going to be more at risk. And we uh, make medicines that uh, treat uh, all these conditions. So it was very important for us to make sure we could supply patients with their medicines so they could keep their uh, chronic conditions under control. So we've had a surge of demand, in particular in the respiratory field, for our inhalers to treat asthma and chronic bronchitis. And we've gone through heroic efforts, I have to say, in our factories to really um, uh, make sure we could um, deliver those medicines. So that's one aspect of what we've done. Another aspect has been to work hard to look at how can we uh, help and come up with uh, potential new treatments. And we've looked at this in three parts. One is the virus itself. Two is the immune response, which in some patients develop to the extent that they have this hyperinflammation developing in their lungs, but that also attacks their kidneys and, and their heart. And the third part has been how do we protect organs? <clears throat> So we are developing a monoclonal, so-called monoclonal antibody that can be used to treat and, and prevent the disease, the viral infection. We're also in the process of testing our new BTK inhibitor, Calquent, mm -hmm. that is used for a, a certain form of leukemia and can reduce the inflammatory response. And also we're testing uh, uh, an agent right. uh, that we have shown as benefit in heart and kidney, and we're using it. We're using it in a trial to to show um, uh, organ protection. Mr. 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 Sorry, I, I want to be direct. AstraZeneca has a stock chart that is the envy of anyone in the world, including Jeffrey Bezos of Amazon. You people have been on a tear with six wonder drugs drugs to come, including your stunning lung cancer success. With that all, we see some sell ratings, including Goldman Sachs has a sell on your shares. I talked to our Sam Faselli, and he and I looked at your financials, 
And it's really, really interesting with the AstraZeneca success, how you're going to shift from a dividend paid off debt to a dividend paid off cash flow. How will you accomplish that? And when will you accomplish that? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, uh, uh, and thank, thank you for acknowledging we're doing well. But I can tell you it hasn't been like this uh, uh, always. Uh, it's, and it is the result of uh, the hard work of a lot of people in our R&D organization, but also commercial organization, manufacturing. Everybody's been working very, very hard over the last few years. Now, as far as well, Goldman Sachs, tell me about the just... dividend. This dividend, this dividend, the, Mr. P sorry, this dividend question yeah, yeah, is critical to Global Wall Street. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, as far as Goldman Sachs, you'll have to ask them why they have us on sale. They have a, they've had, it, they've had us on sale for the last six years. So um, only them could explain to you why we they have us on, have us on sale. But the, the the dividend, yes. I mean, we've said uh, we've said for the last few years that we would go for a period of time when we would not cover the dividend with our cash flow to a period of time, which is now, where uh, basically our strong top-line growth will drive improved operating margins and improved cash flow, and we will cover the dividend. So what we've said is that this year we will cover the dividend except for the one-off payment we have to make to Daiichi Thank You as part of our collaboration on Her2. <clears throat> And from next year, we will fully cover the dividend. And beyond this, we will um, more than cover the dividend and start uh, deleveraging. So we are very much on track with what we've always said to people. And I think the sharp price reflects the fact that most analysts and investors believe that we are indeed on track to achieve that. <clears throat> what, what is most perplexing about this pandemic? Uh, Mr. Soyo, when you look at, uh, you know, you were at the forefront also in China. What have we learned? What can we learn from China? What can we, you know, not trust in the China data? Oh, I think uh, we've all learned, uh, you know, when I say all, I mean, the industry, but also government, the medical community, absolutely everybody's been learning almost on a daily basis something new about this virus. And, and uh, you know, the whole world has been very agile to adjust to it. Um, what we've learned are mostly two things, really, is, number one, this virus is incredibly contagious, which is a big difference compared to other infections. And, you know, by being contagious, it creates specific challenges because, you know, people will contaminate each other very quickly. We've also learned that uh, people can be contagious even though they have no symptoms, which makes the challenge even bigger because, you, you know, you don't know who is going to infect you. And the third thing I think we've, uh, we've learned is that um, another specific aspect of this virus is this uh, hyperimmune response I was describing earlier that it tend to, tends to trigger in some patients. Not a lot of patients, a small percentage, but because it's very contagious, it affects a lot of people, of course. And that hyperimmune response creates this uh, inflammation of the lungs that really brings people to the ventilator and, of course, is, uh, is driving this mortality we've seen. And I think everybody's been really moving very quickly. I mean, think about how quickly in a matter of weeks and months the medical community has identified the, the virus. Everybody's working and looking for new cures and, and also prevention. So, you know, it's, it's a big challenge for the entire world, but we are all adjusting as quickly as we can. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Sorio, we're running out of time, but uh, very quickly, is, is business the same as it used to be in China? I think you're back to full capacity in terms of manufacturing. Yeah, China has bounced back very quickly. Um, we are, our factories are running at full capacity, and uh, our teams are very much active, fully, fully uh, you know, back, uh, back at work. Now, <clears throat> of course... Patients are I must say, still worried about going to their doctors and their hospital, going to a hospital, which is what we see in Europe, in the U.S., and everywhere, I must say. And it's a problem, of course, because patients who have chronic conditions need to see their doctors. So they need to go see their doctor to make sure they're well uh, taken care of. And if they don't, then they will uh, allow their chronic condition to get worse and worse. So, but we are rapidly in China returning to normality, I would say. 
Now, wow. with some, of course, uh, specific aspects where people are wearing masks and, and social distancing right. is important, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, you know, we're sort of yeah. returning to a new norm, if you will.